In this video, we'll take a look at how you use the fundamental counting principle in order to solve counting problems. And in this first example, we have a school cafeteria that offers uh, a choice of two different main courses. The person could either have a grilled cheese sandwich or the soup of the day, and five possible desserts. They could have jello or a pudding or a fruit cup or a sundae or a granola bar. And the question is, how many different lunches could you have? So I'm going to use some abbreviations to represent the main courses and desserts. We don't have to write out the words every time. So the capital G will represent grilled cheese sandwich and the capital S soup of the day. The desserts I'll use a lowercase letter, J for jello, P for pudding, F for fruit cup, S for sundae, and B for granola bar. And so we could just list all the possibilities. For example, having a grilled cheese sandwich and a jello would look like this. Having a grilled cheese and a pudding would look like this. Grilled cheese and a fruit cup, grilled cheese and a sundae, grilled cheese and a granola bar. And then we could do soup of the day with each of them. And so those are the, all the lunches that start with soup of the day. And so if you count them, you notice that there are 10. So there are 10 possible lunches. Now the way the fundamental counting principle works is in order to create a lunch here, there are two actions that have to be uh, performed. There's two ways to select the main course and for each of those two ways there's five ways to select the dessert. That's why I've actually got this ranged in two rows of five. So there's two ways to select the main course, either grilled cheese or soup of the day, and there's five ways to select the dessert. So if the first action perform in two ways and for each of those the second action to complete the lunch can be performed in five ways then there should be two times five or ten possible lunches. So this is the fundamental counting principle and I'll summarize it on the, the next page. Now this can also be solved using a tree diagram and tree diagrams can either go across the page like this one is or you can start at a uh, some point on the page and work down. There's two different ways to draw them. So this is the tree diagram. This point right here represents the fact that you have two choices to make, first of all, for the, uh, the, the main course. And so the main course could be this um, branch right here represents choosing a grilled cheese. This branch down here represents uh, choosing a soup of the day. So let's say we've chosen the uh, grilled cheese. There are five branches here because there's five possible selections for the dessert. And so that's the jello, the pudding, the fruit cup, the sundae, or the granola bar. And even if you've selected soup of the day, you still have, of course, the same choices for the dessert. So this point right here would represent the person selected grilled cheese and a jello. And then this one here represents grilled cheese and a pudding, so GP. Grilled cheese and a fruit cup. On down to the bottom, the last one here would be selecting soup of the day and a granola bar, which is the SP. So these are the uh, same thing, same possibilities that we listed here. So the tree diagram is just a, a different way to organize it. And the nice thing about a tree diagram is that it's a very organized way of doing it so you don't miss possibilities. So that's the nice thing about a tree diagram. So the fundamental accounting principle says this, if an action can be performed in M ways, like for example selecting the uh, lunch's main course in the previous page in two ways, and for each way a second action can be done in N ways, for example picking the dessert in five different ways, then the two actions can be done in M times N ways. So the this is all part of the same thing, like there's two parts here, selecting the first part and the second part, so we would multiply the uh, M by N to get how many ways this, this whole thing can be accomplished. Now the fundamental accounting principle can be extended to cover actions that can be performed in more than two ways. So for example, let's say you're purchasing uh, an automobile. Perhaps there's a certain number of exterior colors times there's a certain number of interior colors times there's perhaps you know four different uh, engines and uh, three different transmissions or whatever. So you could actually figure out how many possible automobiles you could pick um, for, for any particular model course that way. So it doesn't have to be just something can be done in two different ways. In example two, uh, John is colorblind, and the significance of that first sentence is simply that uh, he could literally um, make his outfits here uh, to not particularly match. So that's why the first sentence is there. And we're told that he has five different pairs of pants, eight different shirts, nine pairs of socks. We'll assume that the socks are all paired, so there's not 18 socks he could choose. 
Uh, and so nine pairs of socks vary in color and then three pairs of shoes. And we're, the question is how many different outfits can John show up to school in if he has to wear a pair of pants, a pair of socks, a shirt, and a pair of shoes. And so so this is uh, the fundamental accounting principle, and there are four actions here. There's five ways for him to select his pants. And for each of those, there's eight different ways to select his shirt. So five times eight. And for each of that, there's nine different pairs of socks he could put on. And for each of those, there's also three different pairs of shoes he could put on. So we would multiply five by eight by nine by three and get 1,080. So there's 1,080 outfits he could possibly wear. Uh, assuming he's colorblind and he's not going to make it look really nice. He might have really, really poor colors going together. Okay, so there's 1,080 possible outfits that John could wear. Example number three, we have uh, a license plate. And license plates in this example are three letters followed by three numbers. And the question is how many license plates are possible. So there's no restrictions here. We'll get into restrictions on the next page. Um, actually, sorry, not the next page. Uh, restrictions would be, for example, that uh, all the letters have to be different or all the numbers have to be different. That's an example of a restriction. There are no restrictions here. So in uh, there are 26 letters in the alphabet. So this letter could be selected in 26 ways, this one 26 ways, this one 26 ways. If there was a restriction where they had to be all different, we could say this would be selected in 26 ways. And since we've already used one particular letter, then that would be 25. And then that would be 24 if they had to be different. So there is no restriction here. So they're all 26s. There's um, 10 different digits, 0 to 9, for each of the numbers. And the reason that we would multiply these together is because for each of these 26 ways to select that, there's 26 ways to select this one. And for each of those, there's 26 ways to select that one. And for each of those, there's 10 ways to select that number, etc. So 26 times 26 times 26 is 26 cubed, times, and this would be 10 times 10, or 10 cubed. So there's 17,576,000 possible plates that could be made, with no restrictions whatsoever. And uh, example number four says, specially licensed plates have either four letters followed by two numbers, or five letters uh, followed with one number. And the question is, how many of these specially licensed plates are possible? So similar to what's on the last page, there are four letters. So it would be 26 times 26 times 26 times 26. So 26 to the power of 4 times, and there's two numbers following it. So times 10 times 10 or 10 squared. So there's a little over 45 million of those. Now, so there could be four letters followed by two numbers or five letters followed with one number. So the five letters followed with one number, there's five letters. So 26 to the power of 5 times 10 to the power of 1. So there's 118,813,760 possible plates that have five letters and one number. Now, these are two different categories of license plates or kinds of license plates. So we would employ what some people call the sum rule and add the 45,697,600 to the 118 million number. And so altogether, there's 164,511,360 specially licensed plates that are possible. We would add them because there's this many with four letters and two numbers, and there's this many with five letters and one number, so we would add those two together. We would not multiply them, because these are, are two different cases of how the license plates can be made. In example five, a president, treasurer, and secretary to be drawn from the people Amelia, Bruce, Carmen, and Dolores. And we'll use the capital letter at the beginning of each of their names to represent Amelia, Bruce, Carmen, or Dolores. Uh, this is the year that the president must be a female. So in this particular school, uh, Bruce is out of luck this year. Uh, so they're only selecting uh, female uh, presidents. So they have a some kind of gender rule here. So let's say that this selection here is for president and then this selection in the middle here for, is for treasurer and uh, the next one's the secretary. So how many executives can be chosen? So there's only three possibilities for president because Bruce is not allowed. So it's Amelia, Carmen, or Dolores. For treasurer next, um, this point here would represent that Amelia has been chosen for president, so she cannot also be treasurer. So we could have uh, 
Bruce, Carmen, or Dolores for treasurer. At this point here, we have uh, Carmen as president, so Amelia, Bruce, or Dolores could be treasurer. And this point here, we've chosen Dolores for the president, so there's possible Amelia, Bruce, or Carmen for treasurer. So at this point right here, we've chosen Amelia for the president and Bruce for the treasurer. So only two possibilities left for the secretary. It could be Carmen or Dolores, and we would just keep on going through for each one. So for example, right down here at the bottom, uh, we've selected uh, Dolores for president, Carmen for treasurer, so there's only Amelia and Bruce available for secretary. And so we would list all the possibilities. So A, B, C is the top one, Amelia, President, Bruce, Treasurer, Carmen, Secretary. The next one would be A, B, D, which is Amelia for the President, Bruce for the Treasurer, and Dolores for the Secretary. And so these are all the possibilities. If you, of course, add them all up, you get 18 possible executives that can be chosen. To use the fundamental accounting principle, it would look like this. Uh, right here, for a President, there's three possibilities for President times. There's three possibilities for treasurer because once one person's been chosen from the four there's three left for the treasurer times and once you've selected two people there's only uh, there's only two people left for the secretary so three times three times two also gives you 18. So there's two there's two different ways to solve that. The, uh, the multiplication here of course is the uh, fundamental accounting principle. In example six, it says how many three different even three digit even numbers can be created if and in a repetition of digits is allowed. So that means you could have, for example, a number uh, 334 because the, the three has been repeated twice there or 555 using five all the time. Now, if it's a three digit number, then you cannot have a zero here. You can only have one to nine because you have a zero here. It's not truly a three digit number. Uh, you could literally have any number from 0 to 9 for the tens digit. And of course, if it's an even number, you can only have 0, 2, 4, 6, or 8 on the end. So there's nine ways to select the hundreds digit. 0 to 9 is tens. There's 10 ways to select the tens digit. And there's only five ways to select the last number if it's going to be even. You have to have a 0, 2, 4, 6, or 8. So we would multiply these because if there's nine ways to select this, for each of the nine ways to select the hundreds digit, there's ten ways to select the tens digit, and for each of those, there's five ways to select the uh, last digit, the ones digit. So nine times ten times five is 450, so there are 450 three-digit even numbers with repetition of digits allowed. So that's using the, an example of using the fundamental accounting principle. Now let's say repetition of digits is not allowed, so you cannot repeat a digit. You're only allowed to use it once. So again, this has to be 1 to 9, but of course it has to be different than the other numbers. Same with this. Uh, this has to be some number from 0 to 9, but again, different than the other two. And on the end, you can only have 0, 2, 4, 6, or 8. It has to be even. Now we're going to consider two possibilities. So first of all, let's say that there is a 0 on the end here. So that represents a digit, not how many digits you can have here. Let's say there is a 0 on the end here. This number here could be anything from 1 to 9 then. Remember, it has to be 0 to 9, but different than this. So instead of there being 10 possibilities here, there's only 9. So the 9 represents how many different numbers there could be here. Now, this number already couldn't be 0. Okay, So it has to be something from 1 to 9. So if that's a 0, well, this already couldn't be a 0. Uh, but of course, this digit has to be different than that. So instead of being nine possible ways to, to select the hundreds digit, there are eight, because again, that digit has to be different than this one. So eight times nine times one, if you want, uh, would be 72. So there's 72 ways to make these numbers if it ends in a zero. Now, if it ends in either uh, two, four, six, or eight, so there's four possible numbers here. We could do them separately, but they're all the same. If there's a two, four, six, or eight here, this number here, has is one of nine numbers. So for example, uh, if this ends in a two, well, this can't be a two. It would have to be um, zero, one, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. So there's nine possible ways to select this. Remember, it just has to be different than the two, the four, the six, or the eight. And this number here, now this number here has to be different than this one and this one. 
So instead of there being nine possibilities here, there are seven because again, this number has to be different than the one in the tens digit and the one in the end. So we would multiply seven by nine. We'd also multiply by four because there are four different digits you could have in the end here. Uh, so that's what the four represents. There could be a two, the four, the six, or the eight. So four times seven times nine is 252. So we add these because this is the way the digit could start with, uh, or sorry, end in a zero. This is the way it could end in a two, four, six, or eight. So we would add those together and use the sum rule. And so we get 324. So our 324 are three digit even numbers with repetition of digits not allowed. And that's the end of the lesson.